Before I get into the fourth and final pattern type, I'm going to quickly review the first three patterns that we discussed and just take a look again at the plain arch pattern with the road test and the exemplar next to it. Let's bring in a couple prints and see how they look. Okay, what about that one? Is that a plain arch? Well, hopefully you recognize that it's out of rotation. Let's put it in proper ro rotation. And yes, this is a plain arch. The ridge, uh, ridges start on one side rising and returning and flowing out the other side. Let's do another test. What about that? Is that a plain arch? It's a little squatty. Let's... That's definitely another plain arch. Let's try one more. Okay, you should be seeing that the uh, print is upside down. Ridges are supposed to come across, rise, not lower themselves. And we can just rotate it and determine that it is a plain arch. Now don't allow this white void or crease area to affect your pattern interpretation. What that is, it's a permanent scar and uh, you can see where the, the ridges are uh, definitely affected and there's a distortion and puckering in this area right here. So this was a nice, uh, very linear, clear cut, uh, probably deeper than a paper cut. A paper cut usually doesn't do that much damage, uh, so that's a scar. Let's continue with the tented arch, and you'll remember the camping tent uh, with the ridges, and it appears to be a tent post, so let's bring in a print and make a comparison. And again, we know the rotation is not correct, so let's spin that around a little bit. And this is a clear-cut camping tent. It's a good example, primary example. What about this one? I just have to rotate that around again, of course, and that is a plain or a tented arch. Very clearly, clearly visible tented arch. Another tented arch. And this is somewhat smaller of a tent formation, but it, very importantly, we have that little area right here that indicates that it's a tented arch. Let's review the loop, and you remember the analogy between the river flowing into a lake and the delta formation, the shorelines and the type lines. So let's bring in a loop pattern, and that clearly is uh, visible with the analogy. Bring in another one. And that one definitely needs to be flipped around. And just like the loop, it's uh, the analogy, it's coming from the side and rising, curving, recurving, and returning. And one more. And we also know that there are two directions for the loop. In this case, this is in all likelihood from the left hand. And I can copy and paste it and make an additional one and just rotate this around. And now I have what would be represented as a loop from the right hand here. And this would be the left hand. Although that can vary, and we'll learn more about that at the end of the program. Okay, now I'm going to get into the fourth pattern that you'll have to learn, and that is the whirl. And uh, you may remember the analogy of the camping tent. And um, I have uh, a young man here with a bow and arrow, 
And maybe you didn't t pay too much attention, but that is uh, a target in the background. Oh, this is another, this is a little bit better picture. And now the analogy is I'm going to use a bullseye, a bullseye target as the analogy for the whirl. And this is going to be the introduction to the whirl. And what I like to describe is. the world pattern and uh, its very consistent concentric circle formations and it looks somewhat like a bullseye. So as I examine this analogy and uh, this target with the arrow, I have an actual fingerprint here and again, let's draw attention to the concentric circles that exist. Compared to the other fingerprint patterns that we've observed, the whirl is in many ways very different. This whirl pattern displays concentric circles and uh, there are just many of them and they circle about in the very center of the fingerprint and uh, this is this is clearly the most uh, easy to recognize world pattern. I'm going to just draw a rendering of a world pattern particularly speaking of the plane warp pattern and you remember it is a series of concentric circles basically and some people can refer to it as a whirlpool probably or the best thing is the bullseye target in my opinion maybe you remember from the loop pattern the type lines and that's what I just drew, uh, drew right here let's take brown and make those brown these are the type lines. Remember the shoreline of the river? Well, a whirl has two sets of type lines, or has two deltas, therefore it has the type lines on both sides. I can go back to the black, kind of draw in a delta. So what we see here is the concentric circles, which is uh, a whirl pattern. And let me just bring in an actual world pattern and hopefully you can see the resemblance of these circular ridges. Now on this print the deltas and type lines are not visible. But what I want you to look at is the, cir the circular formation and it is clearly completely different from the plain arch, the tinted arch, and the loop pattern. Uh, so in your observation process of whirls, if you think you know what a whirl looks like, and then if you can eliminate it being an arch, tinted arch, or a loop, then you'd know it'd be a whirl. Another type of whirl pattern I'm going to draw and it is more elliptical in shape. In other words, the, the ridges, instead of being concentric, they appear to be an ellipse or oval. And this is represented here. And maybe now you can see this uh, elliptical formation here. If I were to make it squatty, it would look more like a plain whirl. Or, the, or it is a plain whirl, but uh, it would make it look like the concentric circle whirl. And I have distorted it, but that's okay. I'm going to work with this and just redefine, go back to my brushes and redefine, if I used red it would show better. 
All right, and you see how these ridges are elliptical? Very easy to see. Very easy to see. Let's go backwards. Let's look at a definition of a plane whirl. And this is a simple one that I like to use. And we'll describe it as a target shape pattern with two deltas. And importantly, getting back to the analogy, a plane whirl, if you can connect the delta formations and draw a line, and I'll just go ahead and draw over this. Remember this is the approximate location of the delta, so I'll start there. And if I go from one delta to the other delta, if I draw that straight line, what's important is, and I'll change colors for this, this line from these two deltas crosses over these concentric circles here, or at least one curving ridge, or recurving ridge. That is what makes it a plane whirl. And that is the classification of it. You do not have to learn how to classify. You just have to learn to recognize the pattern. And let's do the same thing here. You see where I drew the arrow across and now when I'm drawing the circles, the concentric circles, it is passing this imaginary line which I drew with an arrow. It may be a little bit more clear here where the curving ridges, the, the circular ridges are passed by the arrow. Let's just go over the arrow with this other color and get all kinds of colors in here. There's the arrow across. Again, it's not important, um, in, in my opinion, for you uh, to be able to um, determine a plane whirl. Uh, but but if, it is, if you have multiple concentric circles, it will be a plane whirl. Let's look at another type of whirl called the central pocket loop whirl. And you see uh, what appears to be concentric circles. And I can designate them with red. There's a nice concentric circle there. And there's a circular formation here and here. But the, the definition of a central pocket loop whirl is it's the opposite of a plane whirl. And you notice how I have these, I have the arrows drawn between the deltas. And when I cross the two delta formations, I do not cross a pass uh, uh, past this curving ridge here and you see how it misses it here too. It does not strike across this curve and this one here misses it very careful, uh, very easily. Uh, again, this is, a, this is a classification, this is getting into the subclassifications of the world. But once you recognize, for our purposes, recognizing worlds, once you recognize that circle and in this case, there's one here, there's one here. There's clearly one there with this recurve. And importantly, if the finger is completely rolled, there should be two delta formations visible. And they are just inside the type lines. So I'm really marking these up. There is a type line there. Okay, so that's the central pocket loop whirl, but all you are required to recognize is the whirl. I'm just going over these anyway. 
The third type of whirl is referred to as a double loop whirl. And I define these as simply two separate loop formations inside two delta formations. And what I mean by this, of course, is if you can recognize this looping pattern here, it's quite easy to see. The ridges are curving, recurving, and coming back to that side. But also we have another looping formation. Actually, let's do that in another color. Let's go back. Let's do that in blue. And do you see now I have a secondary loop formation, looping formation. And this should be very visible to you and noticeable to you. There's no other pattern that looks anything like this. Uh, of course, it looks like two loops and one inside the other. Very easy to see that. Same way with this one. Let's do this one in blue. Come around. Maybe one on the inside here. And then there's this other loop formation that comes this way. Clearly we have two different loop formations. And the more the most visible of all would be this one here. This is a little bit darker, this loop formation. Clear, clearly visible that there are two loop formations here. So I hope you don't have any problem recognizing this pattern that has the double loop formation. The last type of whirl is the accidental whirl. And these will be very easy to recognize because they don't look like anything. Um, they don't look like the loop or the arch or the tented arch. And there is so much going on with them. This is an example here of an accidental whirl. And if you'll notice, and maybe I should use red, there are three delta formations here. And this goes this way. And these are the three delta formations that we have. Uh, along with that, of course, is a looping ridge here. And it's coming up, and it's making a double loop. And it's coming up here. So it's not a double loop whirl. It is definitely an accidental whirl. This one here, you may see a few of these. And this is a combination of a loop over a tented arch. This will always be a whirl because it combines two patterns, not one of them being a plain arch. So let's look at the looping pattern here. OK, come around. And now I also have what is the conventional tented arch, if you remember. It's coming up here. So that is the accidental world that combines two, two patterns. And I have another example here. And if you look, it's quite similar to this one over here, where I have my multiple delta formations. the multiple loop formations. There's actually one there. There's one here. And there's one there. Easily recognized as an accidental whirl. Before we do the quiz on the screen, I'm going to go over the Whirl Pattern Recognition Guide. And this is some information that will maybe be useful for when you take the exercise. I have, of course, in the very center, my analogy uh, for the whirl pattern. And that simply is that the uh, target or the bullseye is uh, 
consists of concentric circles like a world does. And it also applies to uh, a number of different worlds. And the main thing is, of course, you're looking for something that is circling or spinning in a world. I'd like to take a few minutes now and just discuss the actual definitions from SWIGFAST of the plane, central pocket, double loop, and accidental world. You can follow along with me with your um, handout and I'll begin with the most simple pattern to recognize, that being the world, the plain world. A type of fingerprint pattern which consists of one or more ridges which make or tend to make a complete circuit with two deltas between which when an imaginary line is drawn at least one recurving ridge with, within the inner pattern area is cut or touched. Now this does sound a lot more complicated than I think I can show it to you. What we're talking about the complete circuit and of course we have these these round or these curved concentric circles. The complete circuit is simply when I draw a line between the deltas and now this yellow dotted line that is drawn between the two deltas. Remember in my uh, paintbrush demonstration these are the uh, the circling or the circuit. This is the the term where these ridges are curving and passing through this imaginary line. This is what makes it a plain world. And if you also look on this one here, it's these ridges here. And there are many of them in these two examples. Now there has to be at least one for it to be a plain world. If, there, if they do not cross that imaginary line, then it would be another type pattern. It would be a central pocket loop world. Now again, you will not have to determine if it's a plain world or not in your inquiries and uh, quizzes. You're just going to try to determine if it is a world. Now here's an example again where I have drawn the, uh, well it's not imaginary if you can see it, so I've drawn this line between the two deltas and because this curving ridge right here does not cross. It is, uh, a cent it is a central pocket loop world and not a uh, plain world. Let's look over at this one again and notice that this curving circuit right here is not passing across the yellow line which means it is a central pocket loop world. Let's now look at the double loop world and I have it um, fairly clear here marked with red and blue. A double loop world is a type of fingerprint pattern that consists of two separate loop formations with two separate and distinct sets of shoulders and two deltas. What we're talking about separate is these are making complete loops and they are not connecting with these independent one or the independent one next to it. These, uh, this is the shoulder right here and this is the looping ridge. Same way on this side. And because this line is coming down and not connected to this one, this also is a double loop world. The last type of fingerprint uh, of the world pattern, and the most unusual of all, is the accidental world. And the accidental world can be recognized um, most often it will be a loop over a tinted arch. That is probably the most common of the accidental worlds and you can see the looping ridge here and then you see this tented arch in the, in the very center. So a loop over a T is an accidental world. On this one here, uh, this conforms to the three delta areas where there is a delta formation here, here, and over here. 
So it has three delta formations, therefore it is an accidental world. Hopefully both of these are very clearly not arches or loops. And in that uh, observation, you can immediately recognize them as being a world. And um, subclassification would, of course, be accidental world. Now, in this exercise, we are just going to try to recognize the world patterns in any way you can do it. If, if you can eliminate the patterns as being arches or tented arches or loops, then you should be able to know if it's a world or if you can recognize it from these definitions and uh, this analogy, you can also recognize that it's a world. At this point, you should be able to recognize all four of the patterns. And here we go. What is that? Is that a world? I made it kind of squatty, didn't I? Is that a world pattern? What about this? Is that a world pattern? Do you know what it is? What about this? Is that a world pattern? Can you eliminate it from being an arch or a tenant arch or a loop? What about this one? Is that a world pattern? What is it? What about this one? What is it? What about this? You recognize that? What about this one? Even if I skew it, I'm hoping you can recognize it. And see, I can, I can do all kinds of things to make it um, out of proportion, but it's still, it's the pattern that it is, and hopefully you recognize that. All right, let's try another one. Is that a world pattern? Well, you know, it kind of looks like a loop if it was like this. If you had that much, what would you think it would be? Yeah, you might think it's a loop if you had that much, but that's not what you have. You've got this. You've got this thing coming around. Hopefully you remember. You know it's not a plain arch, right? All right, what about this one? What is going on there? You know, it's not a plain arch, it's not a tented arch, it's not a loop. Let's cut that out. Hmm, what about this one? Hmm, that doesn't look very complete. All that's here is indicating certainly not a loop or not a arch or a tented arch. Looks like it could be a loop. What about this one? I'm hoping immediately you recognize what that is. What about this one? That is actually my left index finger. What is it? Plain arch, tenant arch, are you going through the process or are you immediately recognizing that it can't be a tenant arch or a loop? What about this? Maybe you remember this from the other exercises. Is that a world pattern? What is that? Okay, they're going to get a little bit more difficult here. Next one, what's that? What's that? What about this one? 
What about this one? What is it? What about this one? What about this one? Smiley faces. All the smiley faces are whirls. Okay, what about this? Come on, you know what that is. Now you should be getting your whirl pattern recognition guide along with the quiz I made for this assignment. And like in the other quizzes, you'll indicate a capital W for whirl. You'll also mark an A for arch, T for tenet arch, and an L for loop on each of these. In this process, you will uh, now have the recognition ability to uh, determine the pattern types of these fingerprint patterns. I want you to just watch this quick video that uh, explains so well the target analogy and good luck with the exercises. Oh, you missed! Zoom in on him. Now, now turn, now turn on to the target. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> turn on the target. And the thing is, I got that all on camera. Now turn on to the target. Yeah, Dad, you better get a shot because I've film zoomed in on the target. <laughs> yeah.